Hi, I frequently have people ring me up, possibly a few weeks before an exam, to say, oh, I've got to do these dreaded oral tests and I don't really understand what I have to do and I don't really like singing and doing all these kind of things anyway. Um, can you just run through some oral tests with me so I can have a go at it in the exam? Well, that's fine and one is always happy to help when one can. But really, for a musician, oral skills are absolutely fundamental to what we're about. The ability to hear what we're doing is essential. Now you might think, well, how could we not hear what we're doing? Well, when we're playing or when we're singing, it's perfectly possible to hear the sound, but are we really listening? And sometimes it's interesting in our playing that when we really start listening and when we maybe start to record ourselves performing and then we listen in a sort of positively critical way, how we can discover all sorts of things. And we suddenly think, actually, I'm not sure that rhythm is right. Or maybe I'm slightly rushing there or getting behind time there. Or maybe those notes are not quite in tune. Or maybe I'm making an okay sound on my instrument, but actually it could be better, it could be clearer, it could be more varied, more colorful. Maybe that I'm kind of hearing a little bit of contrast, but I'm not really getting a very good range of dynamics. So when you think about it, we're reading music or we're playing by ear, that's good for oral skills, isn't it, at one level, but are we really listening to what's going on? So oral is not really about oral tests, though you may well meet oral tests if you're taking a music exam, but it's about ongoing oral training. What can we hear? Can we develop memory skills? That's very useful for a musician to be able to do, and it also helps us to learn music. So doing some practice in repeating rhythms or singing back a melody. And even if you don't like singing, that doesn't matter, but being able to vocalize uh, music is a very, very helpful thing. And it doesn't matter about the quality of your voice, but just being able to think music through the voice such a helpful thing to be able to do. Are we able to listen to pieces of music and really evaluate what's going on? Are we able to hear things that have changed in the music? And actually sometimes when we're learning a piece of music, we need to rely on our oral skills to know whether we're actually playing the right notes. Sometimes you can be looking at a note in the music and thinking, well, I know that note's A, but in fact, you might be playing G by mistake. Well, do you know that you've done that? Or can you hear that there's something wrong? If you can hear that there's something wrong, can you hear what's wrong? Because all of this is going to help empower us as musicians. And sometimes, even though I'm a great advocate of being able to read music well, sometimes when we're looking at things, we don't listen quite as intently as we might. So when you can memorize a piece and shut the book, maybe sometimes you're in a better position to be able to really connect with what you're listening to. But the development of oral skills is terribly important on this journey. And this is one reason why at Music Matters we've made a whole series of films on oral training from the very earliest steps through to some quite advanced work. And we've also got a pretty big package for those who are further on the journey, which is called oral dictation, which is learning how to write down melodies, how to write down rhythms, how to be able to combine the two, how to work in two parts, three parts and four parts. Because when we can hear something and write it down, then we're really developing the skill to do it the other way around. So we can look at something and we can hear it even before we've played it. So therefore, we're going to be really good on the sight reading and we're going to be really good at spotting mistakes in our own playing. Or possibly if you're a director conducting a band or an orchestra or a choir, being able to look at a score and immediately hear what all the players or the singers are doing and know whether it's right or it's wrong. 
But of course, it's not just about note accuracy and rhythmic accuracy. It's about all those expressive things as well. Can we hear that this part wants to be a bit louder than that part? Why is that the case? You know, so awful lot of angles go with oral training. So well worth doing because anybody who wants to be a musician will be really wanting to develop their oral ability. And if the films at Music Matters help, have a look at what's on offer and see what might be useful to you. But good luck with this very essential part of musical development.